Hello everyone, welcome to my Soap's official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Tuesday, October 24, 2023. Today on General Hospital, Lucy grudgingly signs over half of deception to Tracy. Laura visits with Curtis, and TJ is worried by Mason. At the Metro Court, Lucy meets with Scott, to sign the official forms signing over 51% of deception over to Tracy. Laura interrupts them needed to talk to Scott. She draws him off and wonders what motivated him to help Cyrus. Scott says it's not as if he broke Cyrus out, and he made it clear to him that he's not on retainer for him, and this was a one-shot arrangement. She wonders if he genuinely feels Cyrus deserves to be released. Scott knows Lee would be upset in him for defending Cyrus, just like she is, but this was a high-profile case, and he had to keep his practice going. She again asks if he thinks Cyrus deserves to be released. Scott says he did seem to be a different guy at the hearing, but he also saw him previously, and he seemed fairly healthy too. Laura gets a text and has to go off. Scott returns to Lucy, who still hasn't signed the papers. Later he discovers Lucy gone and she took his pen. In the Aurora office, Martin sees Michael listening to the recording of him revealing Nina had him call the SEC. He thinks it's time to inform his dad what kind of lady he married, but Martin urges he think before pulling that gun. Martin cautions Nina would see this as his destroying her life, but Michael doesn't care as Nina wrecked his mother's life. Martin says he always performs research on his customers, and given what Nina's capable of, including faking Ava's labor to kidnap her child, Michael should consider that if he's going to take away everything that matters to her. Michael thinks Martin is only afraid about what she'll do to him. Martin argues he should be frightened too, as she has the power and influence to make his life and those he cares about miserable. Martin goes, leaving Michael to think. Nana surprises Sonny at his office with some of their framed wedding photos, including ones of the kids which she wants to make copies of for Carly, Michael, and Willow. Their topic goes to Carly and Drew, the latter of whom is back in Pentonville. Nana hopes Carly is able to get him out. Nina has things to do, so she heads out. Michael walks by to see his dad and catches him on the phone talking to Sal about how pleased he is. Sonny is pleased to see Michael, whom he hasn't seen since the wedding. Michael says he needs to chat to him about something. Sonny shows Michael the photos Nana sent by, adding that she has ones of Donna for Carly, and of Willow and Wiley for him. Sonny gushes that Nina has altered his life, and that's nothing against Carly who is happy with Drew, who will hopefully get out of that hellhole soon. Michael replies that is what he came to talk to him about. Sonny interrupts and says Nana indicated she wanted Carly to get Drew out of Pentonville, and maybe she can use her magazine to help. Sonny thinks he should call her, but Michael advises him to stop. Michael adds they just got married, so not to worry Nana with this. Sonny understands he's correct, and gushes that he wants his marriage to last forever like his and Willow's. Michael resolves to return back to work. Before he leaves, Sonny wonders what he came by to tell him. Michael promises his father he can work it out on his own. Sonny says he can come to him with anything, and they embrace. Michael walks out and makes a call to Nina's office, but she's out. He learns she's expecting back soon, and says he'll speak to her when he sees her. Back in the Metro Court, Martin comes and runs into Scott. He asks whether he's seen Lucy, but Scott just complains that she took off with his pen and walks out. Soon, Nina arrives upset and asks Martin what he's done. He says he is ashamed that he's let her down and hopes she can forgive him. She claims it's not the end of the world, she only wanted him to file those contracts with an advertising by the end of work day yesterday. He realizes she doesn't know what he's done and keeps quiet. At the hospital, Austin pulls Cyrus into a closet and holds a scalpel to him. Austin rants that he did everything he requested and Cyrus still tried to kill Ava. Cyrus is impressed, but says Austin's had his moment, and now he's going to take his hands off him and find a way to get him in to see Mason. TJ checks on Mason and tells him he should make a good recovery following his surgery and likely be behind bars shortly. Mason, who is cuffed to the bed, tells TJ he's gotten out of worse jams before and will this time. TJ exits, but appears concerned. 
Austin invites Cyrus to visit Mason, and Cyrus claims Austin was just incredibly unhappy with him as he was under the notion that he ordered Mason to kill Ava. He says he gave Austin his word that Ava would be brought home safely, and he is not someone who goes back on his word. He wants Mason to tell his cousin what he said to him the night he was with Ava. Mason admits he was directed to take Ava home. Cyrus says Mason defied him, and Mason acknowledges he did. Cyrus isn't happy with him, but at least Ava is safely home. Cyrus gives Mason his word that the anguish he felt when he was shot will pale to what he will endure in his long journey to death if he ever betrays him again. Cyrus screams at him to say he understands, so Mason does. Cyrus smacks him where he was shot and shouts, Godspeed. Cyrus asks Austin if they understand one another, and Austin responds they do. Austin steps out. Portia returns home and Curtis didn't expect her home so early and wonders if something happened. She claims nothing happened. Curtis claims he was looking at the images Trina sent him of her and Spencer in New York. Portia requests to see them, so he shows them to her. She sees they having a fantastic time, which was not the reaction Curtis was expecting. Portia knows she can't tell Trina who she can see and what she can or can't do. She gets a text and needs to rush back to work. Portia heads out and meets Laura, who has come to visit Curtis at the door. Laura explains in case she didn't know, her brother is out of prison. Portia knows, and asks Laura not to disclose it to Curtis just now. She tells Laura that Curtis will be glad to see her, and she heads out. Laura visits with Curtis, who is happy she came to see him. She apologizes for being gone so long, but he knows she was seeking for her kid. She informs him that Mac and Jordan are looking for the guy who shot him, not that it is any solace to him. Curtis is just trying to focus on the future and make the best of his life. Laura says she wanted to reach out to him, but didn't think she could communicate just what he means to her over the phone. He knows they have gone through a lot, and she thinks they have an unshakable connection. Back at the hospital, Portia runs into TJ, who is visibly bothered by something. TJ says there is a patient, Mason, and there is something about him. TJ ignores it and says he probably just reminds him of some other creep he's run across. Later, Cyrus sneaks out past Portia. At the Quartermain home Yuri, who now works for the Quartermains, gets Lois some cookies and other small nibbles per her request. Brooklyn believed her mother was stuffed after lunch, but Lois insists they are for Chase. She asked him over provided they were going to talk over Brooklyn's plans for Blaze. Brooklyn knows better and she accuses her mom of inviting Chase home to help convince her to alter her mind about Tracy's offer. Brooklyn says she'll put her in the box she put Tracy in and promises to never speak to her again if she brings it up. Yuri then brings Chase in. Lois tells Chase she brought him over to help Brooklyn with her song for Blaze, and she asks if he'd mind singing her new song while Brooklyn plays the piano. Chase says he'll always sing anything Brooklyn writes. As Chase sings and Brooklyn plays, Lois watches. After Chase ended, Lois thinks that was amazing and wishes she could have heard him and Blaze sing together. Lucy enters with the contracts and asks Brooklyn where the Wicked Witch is. Brooklyn says Tracy traveled out of town to New York. Lucy shouts of course she did, and screams Brooklyn is just as culpable for all of this as Tracy is. Chase tries to defend Brooklyn, but she believes Lucy has every right to be angry. Lucy had hoped Tracy would be her to see the spoils of her viciousness. She signs the contract, throws it at Brooklyn, and hopes she's satisfied. Lucy then storms out. Lois picks up and presents the signed contracts to Brooklyn. On the upcoming General Hospital, Dante and Cody talk. Nina's world is rocked. Carly gets disturbing news. Maxie shares an opinion. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And, if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.